There we go. Okay, let's try that again. Hello, now you can hear me. Welcome to some yoga with Janelle this evening. Great to have you with me if you're just jumping on. Uh, let me just uh, make sure everything is working properly on my computer here. I've been testing stuff all day long. I've been trying to work with the internet, with my sound and different recordings. And I think I've done everything on my end I can possibly do um, to bring you guys some of the best quality videos. But I see that even on Facebook right now, um, that it's not working. So we'll just hope and pray that it starts working. Look at how glowy I am with my little light here. Isn't that delightful? Let's see if it'll do more than just the loading screen. That would be really nice. I feel like, so what have I been learning this week or today? Hang on. Come on, you can do it. Well, I'm not sure if Facebook is working or not. It's done this before and people have commented that yes, it is still working even though I don't get to see it. So let me just test it on my cell phone here. Um, yeah. So on my cell phone, it's working on my Facebook, which usually shows me doing everything. It is not working. so. All right, we'll just ignore that and we will try to go with the flow here because that's half the fun. So, hi, welcome. Let's do some yoga. So if you're just joining in here this evening, grab a mat. I try to do yoga for all levels. So even if you are brand spanking new to yoga, we can probably get you into a couple poses, positions and have you feeling great about it, not anxious, because that is also my goal. So even if you don't have a yoga mat, you can do it just on your floor. That's always an option. If you don't have any props, um, I've got a nice block and a strap. They're really handy. Um, if you do have a couple of props, um, but I can cue pretty well to using your body as well. But sometimes the feedback that um, stuff can have is nice. So if you need any pillows, um, oh, I forgot to close the door here. Um, yeah, so if you need any pillows, if you need a book, if you <laughs> something big, thick like a block that uh, maybe you could use um, a blanket maybe at the end for Shavasana, whatever you would like. And let's start in any position where you can start to settle down in, where you can start to, I don't know, scan the body, connect with the breath, become present in this moment, all of those good yoga things that uh, we have been discussing or have discussed in the past. Really, um, this whole pre-time is time for you to be able to sense and feel into the body. How are you actually feeling right now? So that the more you can sense inward, the more you can have that proprioception um, where you are in space and time and feeling about, if you close your eyes, can you actually feel your left shoulder blade without needing to touch it or um, whatnot? Building that awareness of the body because then it's though that awareness that allow you to adjust, that'll, um, allow you to sense into some of that alignment so that you can make sure that you're doing yoga safely or that maybe you want to go a little bit deeper in it. So it all starts with that first body scan and being able to keep that awareness as we practice. And as you develop that, then you can keep that awareness as you go throughout your day. And that way you can catch on to little subtle things of, ooh, you know that like that gut feeling that we always talk about, like that's a real thing. Um, that happens in our body and if we start to become aware of how we're feeling then we can sense into um, that that or um, you can watch your stress or anxiety levels oh this situation I'm finding more stressful because I'm breathing more shallow or I'm breathing quicker anything like that so take a couple of moments here to scan in see how you're feeling 
Hey, great to have you with me. I don't see the name, but I'm uh, so glad someone is practicing alongside me. I think that's Elaine. I believe so. Anyways, um, yeah, so let's just start by scanning into the body. Maybe you want to start seated really in any position. I kind of want to do this weird crisscross leg thing. Um, roll those shoulders back and down. That's a great way to just kind of get started. That'll find some length through the crown of the head. So whether you're laying down or seated, both of those um, still apply. And take a nice big breath in. Inhale, fill the lungs. Exhale, let it out. Take another couple of those. Inhale. And a big exhale. So simply by starting to connect in with the breath, we're already going to start relaxing. That stimulates that parasympathetic nervous system. We're going to start becoming more aware of the body. You can feel the movement of breath throughout the body. And maybe even as you're scanning through, you're noticing areas of openness. Maybe something feels really good. Maybe your spine, you're finding some more length through it and you are noticing that. Be grateful. Have a little gratitude for those and if you are noticing areas of tension or those little shadow areas that, you know, aren't quite up to snuff, that's okay. Step one is acknowledging them, becoming aware that they exist. And then step two through 200 is starting to process and um, maybe make a little shift there. But if you aren't aware of it, you don't know what you don't know. So you can't change what you don't know. Or you can't expect someone else to change or become aware of it for you. So one more big inhale breath, big exhale. If you like to set an intention for your class this evening, go ahead and do so now. What is bringing you to your mat this evening? Maybe there's a little word of encouragement um, that you've been playing with. Uh, maybe there's something within yoga that you're working on. Maybe you're working on some flexibility and you want to tailor some of the poses to finding that deeper stretch. Or maybe you're looking for strength um, or maybe you're just looking for a little sense of joy and peace. And can you do yoga with a smile on your face? A little bit of challenges all throughout there. So those are my offerings for you. If none of those will work for you, that's totally fine. Feel free to choose anything that you would like your practice to involve or be dedicated to. So maybe you repeat that once or twice or three times so that you can really lock it in. Take one more nice big inhale. Big exhale, let it out. Ah. Outstanding. Let's start to bring some movement back in towards the body. Maybe a gentle wiggle at fingers, gentle wiggle into your toes. Maybe roll some of your wrists and ankles. I'm getting some of those cracks and pops out. If you crack your knuckles, go ahead or you curl through the toes. Maybe you just drop the head from side to side, getting into the neck a little bit. Beautiful. Oh, that feels great. All right. If you're in a seated position, let's make our way into a nice recline position. If you chose lying down to start, well, look at that. You're already in place. So let's roll on down onto our mat. Roll those shoulders back and down. Feel that space along the shoulder blades, along the back of the body. And already start connecting in um, with um, that low back area. So whether your legs are extended long or bent really doesn't matter right here at this point. But see if you can start to pull that belly button in. And as you start to pull in here, you'll notice the low back starts to press more in towards the ground. So starting to just become aware of that back line of the body this evening. See if you can really push the hips down in towards the mat, that low back pushing into the shoulders, starting to really become alive in this pose and posture of just simply laying here. So if anyone were to walk by, they wouldn't think that you're doing much, but you're really trying to engage all of that front body and push, push, push into that. So let's connect that movement with the breath here. So we're gonna use the inhale to relax. So that inhale, find your length, feel everything expand, creating all that space and that exhale to start to push into those shoulders, in through the spine, into that low back. And this is a little bit easier if you bend the knees, that'll help you connect in with that low back. But you are able to do this with those legs extended long. 
just that tuck of the pelvis and the pressing in as well. So if you'd prefer to keep your legs long, that's always a great option. All right, we're gonna take a couple rounds of just that breath. So that inhale, feel the length, feel the expansion. You're all relaxed here, feeling the lungs and then that exhale. <sighs> Start to push everything in, keep exhaling, maybe even keep that slight hold of the breath. Keep pressing in, super active, slight tuck of the chin, and release, take a big inhale. And exhale, start to press, press, press. Feeling alive and active, excellent. Really feeling that in towards, oh, maybe even feel a couple cracks along the spine as maybe your spine is adjusting beautiful and ah, be, release relax take that big inhale and just a normal exhale excellent let's bring the knees so that they are hovering over the hips if you want more you can start to extend the legs long you can even hold on to the legs here um, we're going to start working with those hip flexors but i really just want to keep working with that breath so let's take that big inhale breath to expand Feel all of that length and even here, exhale, ah, press that low back down, pull the belly in, even pressing into the shoulders. So really active, big inhale and a big exhale, engage. Ah. So from here, if your legs are all the way up towards the ceiling, odds are you're needing to keep a little bit of engagement through the core, even on that inhale, just to simply keep the legs up. Like you can see how tight my hamstrings are by the bend in my knees. That's okay. There's never an expectation that the legs are perfectly straight. So let me just take a little focus here. Let's see if I can find that length. That's my hip flexors that are sore. A big inhale, feel that space. Big exhale, press everything down. <sighs> Excellent. And so trying to keep that nice core engagement as we start to hang out here. So I'm moving my hands just alongside the body and I'm just gonna start a nice little wiggle movement. So walking on the ceiling. So whether your feet are up, at any point you can bend the knees and simply wiggle the knees in and out. You can do that at a 90 degree or really anywhere in between. Having that in and out movement of the knee. You can even bring your hands onto the knees if you want to pressing into the hands is the easiest or even tucking the hands underneath the sits bones and then as you start to maybe lift the hands up you've got to use a little bit more through the core so maybe you want to press maybe you want to add some resistance if you want more so as you're wiggling in you're pushing against the hands oh that feels killer hard oh feeling it tons through the hip flexors yeah it doesn't look like i'm doing much but every time i try to push i've got resistance oh excellent outstanding all right keep that wiggle going let's bring it on a little bit more i'm going to interlace my hands and hold the head up using a little bit more of my upper core now to hold my shoulders up and off so i've got a little bit of a crunch position going and still just nice little wiggles or you can start to come a little bit more into circles with the feet coming into that nice bicycle motion so if at any point the neck starts to hurt you can always just lower the head back down starting to pedal through the feet if you want more intensity you're bringing the legs longer I did a good number of these this morning, so I'm really feeling this. Even here already, my hip flexors are like, what are you doing? <sighs> yeah, we're back here again, body. Got to work it nice and hard. Excellent. All right. Come on, we got 10 more rounds of breath here. Nice big inhale. <sighs> For nine. Keep breathing. And eight. And seven. And six. Keep pulling that low back down. Now we're at five and four, three, two, and last one. Excellent, drop the feet, lower the head down. You can windshield wiper from side to side if that feels good or send the feet back up in the air for more of that hamstring stretch. I like the side to side because as I drop my knees down, I can get a little quad stretch, get a little more into the hip flexors. Oh, this actually just feels really good. Loving this little motion. I think my quads need a little stretch tonight as well. If you ever have any requests for a class also, please feel free to uh, leave me a comment and I'll incorporate a pose into it. 
All right, let's find that stillness. <sighs> Pressing that low back in. Take a nice big inhale. Exhale, engage. <sighs> Beautiful. Pull the knees up over the hips. And we've got one more round of this here. It's a little bit more circuit style this evening. So maybe you want to relax a little bit more, having your hands, or maybe you want to start having your head all the way up off the ground. Excellent. All right. So starting with just some of those little wiggles, maybe you just simply go back and forth in that straight motion. Or maybe you want to start to make circles with the ankles. So if you went one specific direction, it's very common for us to kind of go up and then down with our circles. So let's reverse it. A little bit of brain yoga here. Trying to go backwards on our little bicycle. Keep that low back pressing in. Feeling that nice engagement through the core. I'm going to take actually a little moment here and adjust mm, my shoulders so that I can press more in towards my low back. There we go. Finding that nice connection. So if you want more here, then you can even add in crossing the elbows across the body using more of those obliques getting some of those big squeezes in. <sighs> Excellent. Just be mindful of the speed you're going at. So once you start to include um, the arms and the upper body into this, make sure you slow it down a little bit just so that you can protect that spine. <sighs> or you can just really crank it out if you want to do just the legs or in that lower core. <sighs> Beautiful. Couple more here. Let's keep it going. I think I'm at seven and six and five and four, three, two, and one. Great. Lower that head down and windshield wiper side to side. If we start out with a little core, then we don't have to do it at the end when we're tired and ready for our final Shavasana. It also preps through the body, tells the core it needs to be engaged for the rest of our poses, starts to activate into all of the internals that are there as well. All right, find your stillness. Plant the feet in towards the mat. Reach down for those heels. So even if you can't touch, you're actively reaching down. Notice how that little shift moves through the shoulders. Roll them back and down. And imagine that lifting of the heart, pulling those back of the shoulder blades down. Excellent. Pressing into the feet, lifting the hips up off the ground. <sighs> nice big breath in and a big breath out. <sighs> On that next exhale, see if you can press into the feet a little more, send those hips a little bit higher. Oh, even here, my quads are just screaming at me. Oh. Well, listening to your body, I'm going to keep this a little bit more gentle on my body. So if you really want to press into it, you can lift those hips as high up as possible. If you want more for those glutes, press more into the heels and squeeze those glutes more together. Excellent. Keep holding here in that nice bridge posture. I'm bringing my arms up overhead just straight up because I'm enjoying that stretch more on the shoulders. I've been playing around with different arm placements. All right, now I'm rocking into my toes. I've lifted my heels up off the ground, feeling that a little more through my quads here, giving them a nice stretch, feeling that nice openness through the front line of the body, through the quads, maybe even hip flexors, maybe even into the core. And let's roll down one vertebrae at a time. Beautiful. And coming all the way down, nice and slow, with control. Excellent. From here, if you're holding on to the head, release, hug those knees in towards the chest. Ah, take that nice gentle roll from side to side. Maybe feel that massage over the low back, maybe even over the shoulders. Connecting in with that breath. Beautiful. All right, find that stillness. Bring the arms out wide like a T. Let's just start off with a nice little twist here. So bringing the knees over the hips and dropping the legs down towards one side. So mine are going towards the left. You can gaze the opposite direction of the legs. Maybe even bring that hand up on top. Just keeping it really simple here. 
feeling that nice rotation through the spine. <sighs> Maybe you're including the neck in that spine too. Seeing if you can soften and relax. Ah, using that exhale to let go of any tension. Beautiful, let's release. Turn the head to neutral, swing the legs up and over towards the other side. Dropping the legs down, maybe gaze goes opposite direction of the legs. Maybe that hand goes on top, just to add some extra weight in towards and the legs, getting a little more stretch through probably the outer line of that hip and leg. Beautiful. All right, let's start to release. Turn that to neutral, swing the knees up. Excellent. And make your way up into a nice seated position. So if you want to rock and roll a couple of times, getting that full massage across the spine, maybe that feels really good tonight, or maybe you've got really tight back and that doesn't feel good. So listening to your body, sitting up nice, tall, and strong. Beautiful. I'm going to sit cross-legged and stacking ankle over ankle or at least trying to we'll see how that goes on my knees this morning beautiful all right finding those sits bones pressing in towards the floor roll the shoulders back and down let's inhale start to reach those arms up nice and tall exhale hands to heart center inhale reach it up Exhale, hands to heart. One more of those. Inhale, reach up and hold. Nice and strong. Maybe you interlace at the fingers. Maybe you flip the wrists up. Feel that big stretch all along through the side of the body, through the underarm, through the ribs, even here. And on that next exhale, let's tip over towards one side, coming into a nice side stretch. Really reach through the arms here. And then you can drop one hand down. Maybe you reach the other hand overhead. I'm going to take a couple little pulses here, just simply because I've been enjoying it more. So if you like more of that stillness in the stretch and feeling that release, of course, take it. But if you want to play around with me, that's a great option too. Excellent. All right. On that next one, let's press into the hand, come all the way up, reach up nice and tall and strong. Let's interlace the fingers, maybe you flip the wrists again, feel that big stretch. I'm trying to roll those shoulder blades back and down while reaching the arms up and tip on over towards the other side, hold here for just a moment and then release that hand down, reach up overhead. I'm going to take a couple pulses, so even if you're hanging out at fingertips, and your shoulders are relatively over the hips, that's a great option. Or you can come down a little farther. Just really, wherever you find that sweet spot, wherever it feels best for you. Excellent. All right, we've got two more little pulses if you're pulsing. Press all the way up. Reach on up. And bring hands towards heart. Pressing in nice and strong. Beautiful, let's switch the feet. Opposite foot on top or in front. Excellent. Sitting nice and tall and strong. Roll the shoulders back and down. Let's inhale. Reach those arms up. Three of these. Reach on up. Hands to heart center. Using that exhale to pull the hands down. Release the hands. Inhale. Sweep it up. Exhale. One more. Reach up. Nice and strong, and let's hold here. Imagine you're squeezing onto a block or holding a beach ball. Maybe you've got a, a bowling ball above your head. You're adding that resistance and pressing into that invisible block here. Beautiful. And let's start to add a little twist in. So opening up through one shoulder. Imagine just pulling one shoulder back behind you and then pushing that other shoulder towards the front. Exhale, drop the hands down. Inhale, get nice and tall, so maybe you press it ever so slightly here. And on that next exhale, maybe you twist a little deeper, maybe you just look over that back shoulder. Mm, feeling that nice twist. Let's exhale, release, come all the way back to neutral. Inhale, sweep those arms up. Mm, maybe you take that little moment finding that resistance, squeezing that invisible block nice and strong through the arms and twisting, pushing that opposite shoulder back this time, pulling forward. So still pressing in towards the legs, 
And let's drop the hands down. Take an inhale, get nice and tall. Exhale, twist a little deeper, maybe looking over that back shoulder. <sighs> Beautiful, connecting in. Nice big breath. <sighs> Excellent. Let's start to release and come back towards center. Sitting nice and tall and strong. <sighs> Just taking a little moment here, noticing the spine noticing that posture so even as we're sitting here the heart might be lifting so let's lift the heart a little bit more roll those shoulders pull them back and down feeling that through the shoulder blades and then take a little moment engage through the core so pull those ribs back in lots of times as you lift through the heart you compromise by ballooning out the belly so keep that nice and tucked in as you still try to find that length through the spine Beautiful. All right. Trying to keep this as we move through our practice. So let's make our way into a, just a quick all fours position here. Pressing into hands and knees. Taking just a quick couple cat cows. So cow is dropping that belly down. Taking a big inhale as you look up. And on that exhale, bring the chin towards the chest and round through the spine. Beautiful, moving back into your cow. Taking that inhale and that exhale, rounding through. Do <sighs> one more of each or moving at your own pace. Always a good option to connect your movement with your breath, not with my breath. All right, that's fine, that nice stillness. Pressing into both hands, make sure those fingers are nice and wide, creating lots of surface area to help stabilize in. Engage through that core, find that length through the crown of the head, and send a foot back. You can touch it down, walk the opposite fingertips forward, feeling that balance through the hand and the knee. Float the foot up, reach the hand up if you want a little extra in there. Reach, 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 nice and tall and strong. Kicking through that heel. Let's take a couple of little crunches here. So elbow towards knee. They obviously don't have to come to touch. They can if you want. Sometimes I enjoy bringing elbow towards that hip and knee towards the opposite elbow or to the wrist. Keeps things a little bit more in line. All right, got a couple more of these. Reach it out. Feel that core. Maybe you feel that standing leg and the hip flexor. Reach out and hold on your next one. Nice and strong, beautiful. Drop the hand down, drop the knee down. And pressing in, you can take a little sway from side to side. Great, find that stillness. Press into those hands. Send opposite foot back this time. Maybe touch those toes down onto the mat. Walk opposite fingers forward. Find that core. Stabilize, lift through the foot, maybe even lift through the hand. Keep that chin nicely tucked. Reach, reach, reach. Then let's take a couple little pulses on this side. So coming in for the crunch, reaching all the way out. Excellent. And feeling that hip warm up, feeling the shoulder, getting the blood pumping a little bit, keeping it still nice and easy. Beautiful. A couple more. Keep reaching out strong. Excellent. Reach and hold on that next one. Beautiful. Maybe you lift the leg a little bit higher. Maybe you reach the fingertips a little bit more. And drop the hand. Drop the knee. You can take that little sway from side to side. Maybe you peek back at the toes. Find that stillness. You can bring the knees nice and wide. Let's push back. Take a little child's pose here. Maybe you're sitting down close towards the ankles. Maybe you want that puppy pose, keeping the hips over the knees. <sighs> nice, big, full breath here. Inhale, fill the lungs. Exhale, soften all throughout the body. Beautiful. <sighs> Excellent. Feeling the warmth, feeling the difference after a little bit of a warm up. Alright, let's start to press into those hands. And come on up, tuck the toes under, and press into your downward dog. 
taking a moment, maybe you pedal it out. Maybe you press extra through the hands, feeling that nice connection. I want to play around a little bit with hands and shoulders here. And so notice where you're at and then imagine spinning the shoulders open, finding that extra bit of length and stability. You'll be using a little bit more of your side muscles, but maybe you even need to spin your fingers out ever so slightly. Give that a try. See how that changes that arm position. I'm like locked in here. There's so much power, so much strength from my hands. Great. Let's take a little flow. So let's float towards our plank position. Nice and strong here. You can drop down to your knees if you'd like, or stay up nice and high. Excellent. Keep holding. Keep holding, pressing into either those knees or those toes. Keep sinking those hips down. Beautiful, feeling that core engage. Excellent, let's lower all the way down. Coming down, press up, take your little baby cobra. Maybe you want floating cobra. Hands and feet up off the ground. And then press on up, back into your downward dog. Beautiful. Staying strong through the shoulders, maybe give that head a shake. No, to release through the head. Excellent. Let's look towards the front of that. Hop, step, jump, or tiptoe into a forward fold. Beautiful. Feeling that release, maybe bend the knees, release the low back. Let's inhale, halfway lift. Nice and tall along through the crown of the head, maybe even press into the legs to help find that length. Let's bend the knees, sink the hips. Maybe you sweep the arms up for a quick little chair pose. Sink it down. Press all the way up to standing. Reach right up. Excellent. Nice big stretch here. Hands start center. <sighs> Beautiful. Let's step the right toes back, coming into a nice high lunge position. So staying high up on those back toes. Hips are squared towards the front of the room. Let's take a little moment. Put your hands on your hips, feeling that nice connection. Excellent. Inhale, sweep those arms up. Beautiful. Maybe you add an extra bend through that front leg. <sighs> Relax through the shoulders. So the arms, just imagine them simply floating in the air. I once had someone describe, imagine you had helium balloons attached to your fingertips that were just gently pulling the arms up, making everything feel weightless. So you got lots of strength through the legs here and the arms, the head, the shoulder, simply floating. Engage the core. Beautiful. Excellent. Keep holding here. One more big inhale breath. Reach up maybe a little more. And exhale. Hands to heart center. Let's open this up into a warrior two. So dropping that back heel. So the toes spin outwards, pointing towards the long edge of the mat. And reach the arms north and south now. You can adjust the stance. Usually in our warrior two, um, the arch of the foot would be more or less in line with um, the line that this foot would be creating. That would be that traditional alignment. Um, but if you're in your warrior one position, you're train tracking and the feet are hip distance apart. So to transition into that Aussie, you gotta pull that back hip or that back foot towards the back of the mat a little bit more. All right, let's sink in, find that strength, reach out, take a nice big inhale breath, inhale, straighten the leg, reach on up, exhale, sink it down. Beautiful, let's take a couple of these, inhale up, and exhale down. Imagine those arms floating up and coming back down nice and strong. And up, reach, 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 and down, sink, feel the legs. Pushing into the feet. Imagine you're almost gonna tear that mat apart because your feet are pressing so strong. So feel how the outer lines of the legs, nice and strong, maybe even feel it on the outer edges of those hip flexors. But let's not forget about those inner thighs and the inner line of the leg. So really try to squeeze and pull those together. So you've got two opposite motions happening here for the strongest legs you've ever seen. Beautiful, keep it reaching. Maybe you sink a little more, ah, feels so good. Let's come into our extended side angle. Maybe just drop an elbow to knee, reaching the hand up, 
I'm going to reach one hand down, one arm up. You can float both up for that ultimate expression of a string. Keep the legs nice and strong, though. Big inhale and an exhale. And let's come all the way back up, warrior two. Beautiful. So maybe starting to feel that in that front leg, finding that strength. Let's give that leg another little break. Coming into a few pulses, so straightening through the leg. Oh, feel that relief. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, sink down. Inhale up. Then exhale down. One more time, inhale up. And exhale down. Beautiful. And let's transition. Oh, I, I want to play around with a balance pose uh, this evening. So let's just follow on. I want to get into the half moon. And so I'm going to just heel toe my back foot in a little bit closer. I'm actually just going to step a little bit more in so that I have room out front here. So your half moon is like your warrior three, where you're coming into your standing leg and floating your back leg up. So let's reach those arms out nice and tall. I have my palms facing forward. And then I'm going to start to bend through that front knee. And then bring all of my weight into the front. So ideally, my hips are squaring onto each other. And maybe if you're just hanging out here, this is what your half moon can totally look like. As you start to develop, let's flex into the foot, extend through the heel, and find a point of focus to focus in on. That's when you start to maybe reach down a little bit further if you've got a block. I've got a nice block here. So this foot is active. And the hip is over the hip. Front toe still trying to point forward. Might always end up spinning a little bit. Maybe you reach that hand up. Maybe you extend a little bit more through the heel. And there's also the bind. If you want to bend through the leg, reach for the foot. I do not want that tonight. My body is telling me. And that's okay. And then as you work through this, that's when you can start to mm, touch towards the ground. Or maybe you float your hand up if you want that balance. If you want the strength, bring that hand overhead. Reach, reach, reach. <sighs> Beautiful. And let's start to float all the way back up, landing this in a warrior two. So floating up, dropping that foot back down, sinking into it. Great work. Half boot is one of my favorite ones. I don't know why. I don't teach it very often, but I like it. Excellent. All right. Beautiful warrior two. Now then let's transition back into that high lunge. Sweeping that backhand all the way down. And up, hopping up onto those back toes, adjusting that foot position. Beautiful high lunge. Excellent. Reaching up nice and tall. And let's explore warrior three here. So it's the exact same movement that we just took in that half moon, but this time our hips are squared towards the front and we're gonna keep rolling that right hip down. So you're starting to bring all the weight into that front leg and starting to find that balance. So maybe you use your block again for that balance. Odds are to keep that balance and to make it a little bit easier when this hip is opening up, trying to stack on top. But if you want to add more to the challenge, we're rolling that hip down, trying to point the toes towards the bottom of the mat or the back of the mat or the ground really it's just the ground and then as you can find that core strength extend long through the crown of the head float that leg up a little more and see if you can release from the block or the book maybe you're flying your arms have that t hands can go back behind you or even reach out in front beautiful all right let's start to land this touching those back toes down Reach on up then step towards the top of the mat. Excellent. Inhale, reach on up. Exhale, forward fold. Beautiful. Taking a little moment here, connecting with the breath. Inhale, nice big halfway lift. And let's journey towards a little flow. Bend the knees, plant the hands, take a big step back. So if you don't want to flow, take a child's pose from here. It's a great option. Or just hold the downward dog if you want that strength. Otherwise, we're floating towards plank. You can drop the knees down. 
lowering all the way down or taking the chaturanga roll those shoulders away from the ears as you lift up tuck those toes under find yourself in that nice downward dog position beautiful let's take two more of those at your own pace move this block out of my way just a touch feeling the heart start pumping feeling that strength through the body meeting back and downward dog beautiful I'm pedaling it out here excellent so in our core work at the beginning I didn't really do anything for obliques so if you want something for your obliques here add a bend to the knees imagine touching them down to one edge of your mat bring them up over towards the other edge so they don't have to touch all the way down I'm just dropping your knees from side to side finding that strength if you want more from this you can do it from a plank position dropping down or even dolphin coming down onto forearms. Excellent. All right, back and downward dog, nice and strong. Look towards the front. Take a big step into your forward fold. Nice big inhale. Exhale, release, drop the head, give it a nice shake, no. Inhale, halfway lift. Excellent. Find that length. Maybe you're pressing into the hands. Exhale. Bend the knees. Sink the hips. Sweep those arms up. Press all the way up to standing. Reach up. Exhale. Hands to heart. Beautiful. Let's release those hands down. Inhale. Reach on up. Nice and tall. And start center. Stepping that left foot back and coming into that nice high lunge position. Taking the moment, hands on the hips, rolling right hip back, setting the feet. So if anyone knows why my back leg always seems to have to bend, I don't know if that's because my quads are tight or hip flexors, or if it's a strength thing, but I always seem to hang out kind of like this. But my goal is to be more like this. Beautiful, only something I can see with my little camera mirror. Let's inhale, sweep those arms up. Nice and strong. So finding that length through the crown of the head, imagining those fingers just floating in the air, pulling the core in, finding that strength, lift up a little more. Keep pressing in towards the feet. Beautiful, keep holding. One more nice full breath. Maybe you sink a little deeper. Excellent. Let's start to transition this into our warrior two, dropping that back heel down and adjusting the feet so the toes are putting towards the long edge of the mat. Reach those arms out. Beautiful warrior two here. Sink into it. Find the strength. Pressing into the feet like you're ripping that mat apart. Pulling into those inner thighs. Finding as much power in those legs as you can. Feel how strong you are here. Excellent. Let's bring elbow towards knee. Maybe you're reaching up. Maybe overhead. Maybe that other hand reaches down. Finding your extended side angle. Whatever you'd like it to be. Maybe you want to... So there's a bind. I need to kind of add an extra pull. Maybe you're just reaching for that leg. Or maybe this hand is dangling underneath, trying to get the elbow in line with the knee. Maybe you just reach the hand back. Maybe you start to bend through the elbow, trying to reach for fingertips. I've got short little T-Rex arms. I don't got it, but maybe you do. It feels really good. That opens up, adds a little pull through the shoulders. All right, let's start to come out of this nice and strong through those legs. Keep pressing all the way up. Wonderful warrior two. Sink on into it. Excellent. Let's take a couple of pulses here. So straightening through that front leg. Reach on up. Exhale down. And up. 
Beautiful. Feeling that nice connection. Giving that front leg a little break. Sorry if I messed up the order from the other side. I have just a nice curtain to stare at. Not my notebook, so. You love me anyway. I'm not perfect. I don't teach a perfect class. Although I do give you my very best. All right, a couple more here. Reach and press. Nice and strong. Excellent. Reach on out. Beautiful. All right, if you want, you can relax the hands down. Heel toe that back foot in a little bit closer. I'm getting ready to fly in our half moon. I'm going to just face this way just because I feel weird having my back towards y'all. All right, so powering up into that standing leg. Maybe you're coming on to that tiptoe of that back foot, reaching an arm out or forward. Maybe you start to float that foot up, finding your balance. Find a fo focus point, somewhere to stare at that's not moving. And then flex through those back toes. And just imagine tipping right on over. So you can use this milk jug as a block. It's got some water in it. It's working pretty good. So still flexing into that foot and trying to get that foot nice and high, extending through the heel. Maybe that top arm goes up. <sighs> Once you start to feel stable, maybe you want to balance it, having those bottom arm fingers float. Maybe you fall out of it. That works too. Maybe you touch down to the ground. Maybe you bend through the foot, reach for the bind. Feel the strength in that standing leg. Keep trying to open up through that top hip. Excellent. All right, let's float on back up and land this in our warrior two. So you can adjust the stance. Should you want to add some depth, reach on out. Excellent. Beautiful warrior two. Sink a little deeper. Maybe the gaze goes forward. All right, let's transition into our high lunge. So back arm comes down and reaches forward, hopping up onto those back toes. Or reach on up. Nice and strong. Beautiful. Sinking into that front leg. Nice big breath. Find that length, engage through the core. Then let's flow into our warrior three. So maybe you just simply start to reach forward, kicking up onto those back toes. And floating the leg up, finding that balance, and then roll that left hip down. <sighs> Beautiful. Maybe your hands are on that block or that milk jug. Maybe they're out like a T. Back behind you, overhead. <sighs> Excellent. Keep holding here. Find that strength, find that balance. Excellent. All right, let's start to land it. Drop the back foot down. Reach on up. Beautiful high lunge here. Excellent. I'm going to flip back towards my front. Can't do yoga too much backwards. All right, let's step towards the front of the mat. Reach up, big inhale. Exhale into a forward fold. So great work on your balance this evening. A little bit of strength building. Let's inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the hands down. Take a big step back into your downward dog. Beautiful option to drop the knees, take child's pose, or come to a nice little flow. Finding that plank position, lowering down, press up, yogi push up. Beautiful, nice back bend. Curl the toes. Downward dog. Excellent. Take two more of those at your own pace. You can flow it out however you want, however many times you want, really. Excellent. Feeling that breath. Feeling the warmth in the body. Excellent. Meaning back. 
then that nice downward dog. Excellent. So if you've never played around with your downward dog, here's your opportunity to. So I'm lifting one hand up and I'm reaching for the opposite hip, leg or knee, pressing extra into that nice strong arm, feeling the strength of the shoulder. Beautiful. Keep pressing. Nice and strong. You can release. Reach it out. And then set that other shoulder. And reach for either opposite hip, knee, or even if you can reach ankle. Find that strength. Keep pressing into the hand, into the shoulder. And release. Bring them both down. Press in equally. Excellent. Let's take one more nice flow. Lowering down. Rest on up. Mm, coming back. Downward dog. And then let's drop the knees. Take a little child's pose. Feeling maybe the heart pumping. Maybe the breath. Feeling good. Excellent. I'm going to just stretch out my shoulders here. So if you can get your head all the way down, you bring your hands onto your low back. Maybe you interlace them however you'd like. And start to reach. <sighs> Those hands up off the back. So even if they just come up off a little bit, we can really stretch and reach them out. <sighs> Whatever feels good for you. Maybe you just want to reach the hands overhead tons. Just stretching different muscles throughout the body. <sighs> Excellent. Big inhale breath. Big exhale. Press on up into those hands. And let's make your way into the all fours position. So bring those knees back under those hips. Hands under those shoulders. Beautiful, nice and strong here. Find that length through the body. Let's bring right leg all the way back sweep it around to that three o'clock position and start to press on up excellent bring your hands onto your hips pressing into that foot into the leg take a nice little moment start to tip on over towards that extended leg so if you want you keep your hands on your hips or you can start to reach that hand down the leg maybe that other arm reaches up and over feel that nice side bend all through the body Excellent. Beautiful. Let's reach on up. How about to a T? Let me just come at a bit of an angle here. So we're hanging out here. Let's drop that left hand down. Reach on up. Beautiful. Nice big stretch here. So maybe you want to lift that leg. Maybe you want to bend the leg. Reach for the foot. Coming into the bind. Uh, the more you kick into the hand and pull into the foot, the more of a stretch you'll be feeling here. You can also grab a strap last so you get, or if you want ultimate strength, you can do this without actually connecting and touching, trying to find that. Reach it up, reach it out. Beautiful. Remembering to smile, nice and happy. Then land that foot, plant that hand down, walk hand over hand. Beautiful. Coming back here. From here, if you want a little puppy pose, start to walk the hands out, dropping down. So my hips are still over my knees. My hands are just reaching forward. Leg is still extended. Nice stretch on the arms, on the back. Nice big breath in. And let it out. Start to press into those hands. Walk them back in. Beautiful. Bring it back to the knee. Bring it back. Then coming right in towards the other side. Send that left foot back. Or kick it out towards that nine o'clock position. Start to walk the hands up. Beautiful hands on the hips. 
nice little side bend first. So maybe you just start to sink it down. Maybe you reach that hand down the leg. Maybe you reach the hand up. Maybe even reach the hand overhead, reaching for the toes. Just try to keep that shoulder rolled nice and open. Beautiful, feeling that nice side stretch through the ribs. Let's float on back up. Reach it out to the nice T and land it down. You're reaching up here. Got a little doggy hair in my mouth. Can't seem to get it out. All right, if you want more, you can float that leg up, flexing through the toes. So this is like our little on the knees half moon here. Maybe you want to go for the bind. Seems you don't have to worry about falling too much. Not like if you were standing or closer to the ground. And kick again. Feeling that nice stretch through the body. Ah, oh, this feels great. This is what I needed right here. A little bit of a quad stretch. Lots of heart opener. Still trying to find length through the crown of my head. Then release without slingshotting. Maybe slowly come on back. Foot still raised. Reach on up. Remember to smile. Ah, loving this. Excellent. And drop that foot down. And drop hand towards hand. Start to make your way back towards center. Setting through the feet. Then walking those hands a little bit more forward. Dropping that head down. <sighs> nice stretch through the arms here. <sighs> Feeling that breath. Forehead does not have to come to ground here. So if it doesn't, that's okay. Maybe it does. That feels great. Then let's press into those hands. Walk the hands back. Bring the knee in. <sighs> Then make your way to sitting on your feet. Bring yourself back up. Nice little thunderbolt. I've got my toes tucked under here to stretch more through my arches. If you want to stretch more the fronts of your feet, toes can be flat, shoelace side of your foot down. And if you can't sit back all the way on your feet, that's okay. Whatever works best for you. You could be a little higher up, maybe completely up. Maybe you have your hands a little bit forward and you're taking a little bit of the weight off. And just take a little moment, give those feet a little bit of love, a little bit of stretch. And give those wrists a little shake from all those downward dogs. I've been working on handstands. That was my practice this morning or my workout this morning. So I did tons on the wrists. I'm feeling it a little bit tonight. Giving them a little massage. I'm gonna tuck my toes back under or switching in the feet and sitting back on them. Oh, that feels good. I must also be standing in a heel more than the other because my heel has been really sore. I was right in the middle of it. You know, when you're standing and chatting and you kick a hippo and you lose all your yoga practice posture. All right. Hands a nice shake. Let's lean forward. You can tap those feet. Somehow that feels really good. And make your way into a nice reclined position. So maybe just flip on over. Roll it back and down. Hug the knees in towards the chest. Excellent. Create that little bit of resistance. Maybe you actively pull on the knees, push into the hands, feel that length through the spine. Press those shoulder blades in. Press those hips in in that low back. Ah, feel it all adjust. Excellent. You can take a little rock from side to side. Ah, Give that low back a nice little massage. Ah, beautiful. All right. Well, I always finish with a happy baby, so we might as well make tonight no different. So if you want a little more, let's reach on through those knees, reaching for the ankles or the feet. Or if you can't reach those, then just reaching the backs of the knees. Start to lift those feet up in the air towards the ceiling. Pull the knees in towards the chest or towards the underarms. <sighs> make that nice. We're trying to make that nice 90 degrees at the knees, but it might not happen. That's okay. So playing around here. 
little freestyle portion of the class. What else does your body need? How can you best stretch it out? Maybe with that little waterfall position, get a nice hamstring stretch, or pull the legs in. Maybe you want another twist. Exploring a little bit of movement. Excellent, I can't believe an hour has gone by already. So delightful though. I really love these classes every evening. So thank you for inspiring me to keep doing them. Probably wouldn't do this by myself if I was just in quarantine. So it gives me a little purpose every night. Excellent. All right, start to settle into your final Shavasana. Whatever you want that to look like. Maybe you want both legs extended long. Maybe you want a starfish. Arms to be up overhead or alongside the body. If you grab some pillows or blankets, grab those now. Roll those shoulder blades back and down. Um, some pillows underneath the knees uh, feel so delightful. Like just letting there be some support. You could bend the knees and that also feels really good. But having something like actually hold the legs up is just pure bliss. Uh, it's a wonderful little thing to have. It's actually the most neutral position for our body, like laying in flat. Uh, I think it's 45 degree angle of the hips opening up, uh, 60 degrees in the knees, and then 45 in the feet. Might not be that exactly, but that's what it is for the legs uh, to release and relax. So our knees are actually up a little bit. So connecting in with that breath, take a nice big inhale breath, fill the lungs as much as you possibly can. Big breath in, hold for just a moment and then let it out. We're going to take three more of those. So big inhale breaths, filling the lungs as much as you possibly can. And then on that exhale, let's sigh it out, let it go. Two more, another big inhale. Try to breathe in through the nose and exhale out through the mouth. <sighs> Feel how the body softens and relax. Last one, big breath in. Massive breath out. Get every ounce of air out as you can. <sighs> big exhale. You can continue with those big breaths if you want a couple more. You can return to a normal state of breathing. And start to scan through the body. How are you feeling now after a little bit of movement, a little bit of stretch? Can you start to settle in and soften? And can you be in a couple of moments of stillness? There's no other task you need to do. Our pose is simply lying here. It is now a battle with the mind. What are the thoughts that instantly came to mind? Trying to not interact with the thoughts. If they come in, that's okay. You don't get mad at yourself over that. You can't necessarily stop your thoughts from existing, but you can choose whether or not you interact with them. So if something that's trying to distract you away from simply being in stillness, it's okay, I see you. Give it a little nod, but just leave it right there. Maybe you need to focus in on the breath or the rhythm of the breath. Maybe even adding a count to it, either counting the number of inhales or the length. Those are great little distractions or tasks for the mind to do as you simply take a couple of moments to exist and be. It could be the most daunting part of things or you might really love the Shavasana time, the stillness time. And so as you're settling in, I will leave you here now. I really encourage you to take a full 10 or 15 breaths of simple stillness just to exist. Maybe you have gratitude. Maybe you scan through the body, finding those shadow areas and trying to let them go, trying to release that stress or tension or anxiety. So enjoy your practice. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your night. 
May you every moment be filled with joy, and may you always be blessed. Namaste. Thank you.